All right, hopefully you didn't miss us. We're back. Devin and I are here taking you through the modern rounds of the Nerd Rage 5K event. 5K plus the winner gets an invite to DreamHack Atlanta. Okay, so this round up, we've got uh, Gabriel Ebody versus Nam Dang. Nam Dang, we've seen a lot playing Delver and Legacy the last couple months. Uh, but this time with Full Color Blink versus uh, Gabriel Ebody, we can go ahead and give the players a go ahead. And Devin, you have something to say about this deck. You're uh, You're excited about it, I hear. Oh yeah, this is going to be an awesome one. I am I'm very very excited to see Gabriel's deck in action. This is uh, a deck that is near and dear to my heart. Playing one of my favorite cards, if if not probably my favorite card of all time. Uh, won't spoil it for chat. Will uh, you can kind of probably get an idea of, of with the Grixis tempo, but uh, yeah, playing some uh, some really really sweet cards here. So the your favorite Voldarian Voldarian Epicure. That's what you're talking about. Uh, no, it was actually Bloodstained Mire. That's the card I was talking. Ah, your favorite card of all time is a fetch land. Interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. See, there's well, the there's... Bloodstained Mire. Yeah, so you're you're happy now. But but you would be happy often. Like lots of decks have Bloodstained Mire in it. That is true. Even birds. Your... I don't expand your excitement <laughs> about this round. As but yeah, comes what's play. uh? We'll so see. if. Gabriel is playing. Uh, okay, now we, we should have talked about this while we were off the air. I'm not going to try and pronounce this card. I don't Neither know if you I. want to. Okay, no. cool. We're no, just going to call guys, it Asmo. Yeah, no, if you, if you, there's an MTG Remy um, song. Um, if you want the pronunciation of the card, you can go there. Um, we're not going to bother. <laughs> All right. So Gabriel is playing four copies of Asmo and uh, Asmo is a card. Very powerful. One minute, three, three. It's got a lot of text on it. Uh, you can you're only basically see, as you can see right there, you're only allowed to cast it if you've discarded a card. You, it doesn't actually have a mana cost. So you can only pay it for a black or a red if you've discarded a card gets a cookbook when it comes into play and then it allows you to sacrifice food to kill creatures uh there's just some a lot of powerful synergies going on here the main synergy is you're combining the underworld cookbook with oval chase daredevil which mm -hmm. is a cookbook basically tap discard a card make a food daredevil says when an artifact enters the battlefield if it's in your graveyard you can put it back into your hand so you discard the daredevil make a food food gets back the daredevil basically creates an infinite resource uh, where you're not actually discarding cards to the cookbook because you're getting back the data over for free. So what do you do with those resources? Well, you can sacrifice them to the Asmo. You have other things that utilize artifacts like Urza Saga, very powerful card that we've all seen. And there's just a lot, a lot of stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. Is that a Galvanic Blast in Gabriel Body's hand? That is. I think wow. there's four copies. Yeah, four. The full four copies of Galvanic Blast here. Sure, why not? If you're going to have all of these food running around, you might as well be able to take advantage of them and have Metalcraft. All right, so Ragavan dashes again. First time to take down Ren and Six. Second time connects, gets a treasure, flips a fetch land off of Nam Deg's deck into exile. She probably doesn't mind up too much. And Gabriel, Gabriel does not have another land. Yeah, this is a bit. Uh, this is pretty awkward for Gabriel. I took a I took a peek at his hand, and he has multiple copies of Expressive Iteration. Normally, a very powerful card when you're stuck on two lands. The problem is when one of those lands is an Urza Saga, it gets a little dicey. Mm -hmm. Right. So here, instead of choosing to cast Expressive Iteration, goes ahead and makes a construct uh, on upkeep, and then tutors up Stringly from. So there is another permanent mana source. Yeah, the drum is good. So now we have the we have the saga token in play, which can allow us to utilize the drum, and the drum uh, give it, giving us extra colored mana. So we could see, all right, picked up a spire bluff too. So Gabriel's mana is kind of back online here. It does get a little bit awkward if Nam kills the construct token because then we're down onto the mana source. Uh, looks like there's a couple copy of cookbooks. I don't see a daredevil though. So may have to actually, you know, uh, discard real cards instead of discarding stuff like a Daredevil to get that that free mm -hmm. value that we were talking about. Right. So this is something that I feel like I don't see very often is once Ragavan has dashed a couple times, then it's getting hard cast instead of just continuing to dash every single turn. But that is what we see here as Gabriel does put it onto the board permanent for permanently. And here is an endurance. After the cookbook is cast. So I guess end step there. Yeah, normally you would want to save the Endurance to try and ambush the Ragavan, but Nam assumes that he's probably going to have something else to do with this mana on the next turn, so just wants to have the Endurance in play to make sure you can block the Ragavan the next turn, while also being able to develop this turn. Mm -hmm. 
And that may be part of the reason why Gabriel decided not to dash the Ragavan, as with Nam not committing any of his man to the board. I mean, it's likely he's got something. And yeah, endurance does fit the bill. Pretty hard to dash a Ragavan into four open mana, you know. Mm-hmm. There's an Omnath. We'll see if Nam is a fetch land. Something like fetch land, fury, that'll probably spell the end of the game. There's the fetch land. The problem with this with this Grixis with the um the Grixis Asmo deck is it's not the best from playing from behind. I understand that Gabriel does have multiple copies of Expressive Iteration, but once you've gotten to this stage of the game where mm-hmm. you're this far behind on mana development, even Expressive Iteration can only get you so far, you know. Right. There's just not enough time for Gabriel to deploy all the cards in his hand to, to for any meaningful effect while getting beat down by Omnath and potentially Endurance. I mean, I guess that Construct is decent sized right now. Yeah, we got what, one, two, three, four with the potential to make it bigger with the cookbooks. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, 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 the cookbooks do allow you to kind of outsize your con- size, your constructs pretty well, but. but only being able to make one construct token and yeah, just not be able to cast your iterations up until now as allowed. Nam Dang to develop a pretty solid mana base while yeah. Gabriel's still in the early turns of the game. Like you look at the left side of the board, it looks like it's, you know, you're comfortably on turn three and the right side, we're about turn five. Uh, and that's a problem for Gabriel. Yeah. Urza Saga, very powerful card. If you can, you know, hit enough land drops to make tokens with it. Like this game is probably a lot different if Gabriel just didn't miss one of the land drops and was able mm-hmm. to make multiple tokens off the, the, the saga. Um, but just missing the first land drop meant that he had to play very awkwardly. He had to dash the Ragavan just to get the treasure to make the second construct, then lost the saga, had to get a spring leaf drum because he was still short on mana. It just made the, it just made everything so awkward. Mm-hmm. And now the the reduced pace of the game gives Nam Dang the window. Thinks he has time for Emrakul the Promise End, so tutors that up here off of Traverse the Umwald. And uh, well, this is yeah okay. Expressive Federation now gets rolling, but uh, like like we've like you summarized uh, the uh, the time for this is kind of passed. And now you're casting a two for one, and Nam Dang might be throwing down an Eldrazi. Well, this is not too bad for Gabriel because we do have the Galvanic Blast to take care of the Omnath. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know exactly the number of types in Nam's graveyard, but I doubt it's what, one, two, three, four, five. I doubt it's seven. Because if yeah. you, yeah, no, it's definitely not seven. Um, well, we got sorcery, artifact, creature, and land at the bare minimum. I think that might be it. I think it's just four. Mm-hmm. So it was a little bit of ways away from Emrakul. Does that suggest then that, well, either Nam's. You got the intervening turns already planned out, or maybe that was a bit ambitious to search up the Emrakul while you're thinking your opponent is stuck there. We'll see how things play out, how they develop. Right. Yeah. So Nam was probably uh, Nam. So doesn't without knowing the contents of Gabriel's deck, might think that Gabriel's removal spell of choice is on Holy Heat, right? Mm-hmm. And because Gabriel has no cards in his graveyard at that time, he said he thought that his Omnath was pretty safe. Maybe had he known about the presence of Galvanic Blast, might not have gone for the Embrical, assuming that he was going to keep the Omnath to get that four extra mana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So this Embrical is going to be a little tricky to cast. And I mean, this Construct did come across for a decent amount of damage there. Five. Uh, I mean, that's... And there's another Saga in play. And yeah, makes... and Nam's, Nam's on a Counterspell too, which is not doing much against the, the active Saga, so... Mm-hmm. All right, so here's another Traverse. Maybe we're getting another Omneth. Yep. yep. So now this Omneth is likely going to be able to allow Nam to cast the Emrakul next turn after we, after we get the uh, additional four man off the fetch land. Right. Could also is... still do something this turn, like a maybe a Solitude or a Fury or something along those lines. Yeah. All kinds of mana available for these decks. Or it could just be uh, a lot of times the Omneth mana just is used to to pick up the Yorion as well as another option. Yeah, I actually saw the Yorion in Nam's hand. I think he might oh, have picked it up it. on. Yeah. Oh, he's casting it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know exactly when he picked it up, but I think it was maybe 
It might have been turn. Might have just been turn three. Okay. So this is going to be a Yorion for three cards. With significant shortcutting there, just putting the lines, the enchantments back where they were. So yeah, Omneth trigger and two abundant growths. Yep, and then like like we said, with the Omneth, likely going to be able to cast the Emrakul next turn. Because I didn't see a removal spell. Okay, I guess we could find a removal spell off of the iteration, which there's an Asmo, which is good. The problem is Gabriel's kind of low on cards and doesn't have that Oval Chase Daredevil that we talked about to basically turn the cookbooks into free resources. Mm -hmm. So he's basically going to have to trade multiple cards or like discard multiple cards in order to get enough food to be able to um, to be able to kill the odd math. One thing he could do if he had a, doesn't have a fetch land, I was going to say he could bobble himself, look to see if there was a daredevil on top, uh, discard one card with the cookbook, play the Asmo, and then if let's say there was a daredevil on top, you could go bobble trigger, upkeep, draw the daredevil, discard the daredevil, still an upkeep to make the food, and then use those two food to kill the odd mm -hmm. But without you know without a fetch land, can't necessarily uh, fix the top card of your deck as it were. All right. Well, there is the double pitch. Yeah, chat's asking about the token that's currently in play. It's a blood token from a Voldaren Epicure from turn one. Uh, I, we're, we're, we're kind of way past that at this point. But yeah, that is that is a blood token, not a food token. All right, here is the Asmo. So yeah, this is good. But as you can see, Gabriel just has no cards in his hand. So, Well, that's a good place to be when you're going to get Emerald anyway, as long as you can... Uh... <laughs> True. Survive the actual Emrakul, which Nev's at seven. Uh... I was thinking uh... about playing this cookbook. Mm -hmm. The upside of playing the cookbook is if you... I was going to say, if you know your top card was a Daredevil, you could play the cookbook. So, like, let's say if Gabriel uh, bobbled himself and saw a Daredevil, you play the cookbook, then you can upkeep, draw the Daredevil, and then use it on, on, uh, on Nam's mm -hmm. turn. And so if the Emrakul comes out off the Omneth this turn, it will get to, uh, Nam will get to choose how the Urza Saga trigger resolves. That's irritating for Gabriel, I'm sure. But we'll see yeah. if that actually is a scenario or not. There are currently six land in play. So yeah, Omneth mana boost will be enough to put the Emrakul in. Yeah, I'm a little curious that Gabriel, unless we maybe Gabriel hasn't passed yet, because I feel like you'd probably want to kill the Omnath right now. I think you kind of have to. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, we don't. We're not a hundred percent sure certain on how many types are in Nam's graveyard, so we're not uh, exactly like I don't know a hundred percent how much the Semrical costs. I would have to guess it's eight. Mm -hmm. I think five types is usually the the benchmark. Right. So it's still without the Omnath, it's still it's still a ways away. Yeah, and then it's two Omnaths down now, so likelihood of a third one is a little bit low. So I mean, this this feels like a game that Namdang. It seems like he should be ahead, but I'm not entirely sure that he is. Is this construct? Uh, I guess there's not going to be a second construct made this turn. Which, if there was, it'd be a much more threatening. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Gabriel has has done a very good job at trying to treading water this game. You know, he converted both of those iterations into multiple cards, was able to, uh, you know, kind of that that one saga token that he made on turn four, I think it was turn four, has dealt a lot of damage to Dam, really kind of uh, mm -hmm. put, been putting Dam on the back foot most of the game. And, uh, you know, Gabriel's had the sort of clean answer to both of the Omnath, so has, uh, you know, been able to deal with those as well. So yeah, Gabriel is, uh, is is doing well this game. All right, well, there goes the construct. Uh, another one could be made here on upkeep, not on end step. And there's another saga in hand, I think. Yeah, I believe Gabriel drew another saga off of the bubble trigger. And another traverse. Another Omnath. Okay, well, I said it's unlikely he'll draw another one, but he may have agreed with me, so he's just going to tutor one up. Yeah, it's a little bit easier to draw a third copy when you play eight of them. Yeah. Yeah. 
And there is not, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's mana available to activate the saga, right? No, there isn't. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go with the blood. He was going to draw off his bauble and... <laughs> Two more sagas. <laughs> Two more that's sagas. All four of those, I believe. I think that's a little too many. I don't think Gabriel wanted to draw all four of them. No, no, probably not. Uh, if he can survive long enough, this construct army will build quite a force unless something like a dress down comes in and cleans them all up, which has a habit of happening. And Nam is on zero main deck, three in the sideboard. So Okay. Shadow Spear, all right. Yeah, the Shadow Spear can help the Construct punch through blockers like Endurance. You could see something like Play Saga, Equip Shadow Spear, and then... How much damage is this? This might... Okay, hold on a second. Well, it's not coming here. in this turn, though. Oh, right, because it, yeah, you just made it on upkeep. Never mind, mm -hmm. you're right. Seven land in play now for Namdang. So if the speculation on Emrakul is that there was five types in the graveyard, it's getting closer. Right. Omnath, fetch land. That's that's break even, right? So four mm -hmm. Omnath, fetch land. That would be four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, yeah, so that would be break even. So, yeah. But yeah, if we're speculating on five types or no. Yeah, five types earlier. This would be the turn if Nam has the, the eighth land. This would be the turn to be able to cast it. So. Yeah, yeah he's counting it up. And there's no, it's nice that you don't have to pretend that it's a secret because Gabriel knows he has it from the uh, traverse, the first traverse. Yeah. I always feel awkward. I'm trying to count some permanent, some some type of thing that's in play or in the graveyard without revealing to my opponent. And I'm sure I just reveal it every single time anyway, but I'm trying to be sneaky. I just feel like an idiot every time. That's like the uh, the old school where you, you know, you, people would stack up their graveyard mm. and then your opponent draws their card for the turn and then they immediately fan out their graveyard. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I wonder what they drew. Mm. Yeah. So about as far as I got on that was anytime I want to look at my opponent's graveyard, I look at mine first. And then mm. I'm like, oh, just for completeness, I may as well look at yours since I'm looking at mine anyway, even though that was the plan all along. Again, yeah. very <laughs> stupid and obvious, but that's that's what I do. <laughs> Uh, you gotta try to you gotta try to not give away the edges, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember players back in uh, legacy tournaments and local legacy tournaments years ago. And there's one player in particular. Anytime he drew a Snapcaster Mage, he immediately would pick up his graveyard and go so through it, and then and then he then he'd look up at his opponent like, "Oh no, I I I drew a random card. You have no idea what's in my hands. Like, get out of here." <laughs> oh man. All right, Emrakul is in. Okay. There's an Emrakul. Uh, yeah. I don't want to say it's over, over, but... I'm trying to think. So we can suicide the token into the Emrakul. Mm -hmm. The Ragavan into the Endurance. Yeah. We can discard a random card to the cookbook. We can sack the cookbook, the other cookbook, to get something meaning meaningless back. I don't know. This this is this is brutal. Yeah, I mean, when you, <laughs> it's bad enough when your when your own deck can't make you discard your hand and uh, all. So okay, Shadow Spear equips on Ragavan. Yeah, that makes sense. The gain less life. Because you're going to kill both creatures. Oh, right. Sure. Yeah. Gain, no, you're, make, yeah, you're right. Gain less life. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. So that gets cleaned up. And it passed back. So let's them keep the land. I don't know. I might have. Hmm. I would have thrown it away myself because. Yeah. You're, now your opponent has a choice. I mean, sure they could throw it away themselves, or they could keep it for something else. I mean, why give them the option? If yeah. you, if if the food if the food if you're worried the food is better, well, they can make it anyway. So right. it's not. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Namdang will take up game one. Let's go ahead and look and see what Gabriel Ebadi has in the sideboard to potentially improve things for himself. Looks like whoa, 
Shattering Spree's not going to help Might in the mirror. Um, <laughs> as we see the main deck here, there's also Shrapnel Blast. So a heavy amount of burn available in the deck. Uh, <laughs> there's the Snapcaster yeah. Mage, too. <laughs> as we were talking about it. But yeah, so I'm going to assume that from Gabriel's side, he probably wants access to... Um, Soul Guide Lantern, because Nam is the graveyard heavy version with heat and traverse, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Pithing Needle to stop Teferi and Renin Six. I don't hate Spell Pierce, but it is a card that gets pretty dead later on. The nice yeah. thing about having cards like that is you have cookbooks, you can always convert them into resources later on. Um, maybe the Snapcaster, maybe the Fluster Storm is probably not. Not a ton here, though. You know, no, there, there's it's not super exciting. All right, let's go ahead and look at Nam Dang's four color sideboard. Uh, so dress down is of, super yeah. winner. Yeah, There's, dress down very good against the sagas. Basaju as well, good against Saga, good against Cookbook. And Chalice as well, because Asmo is a uh, it costs you you it costs one mana to cast, but it is a zero mana card. Mm -hmm. So Chalice on zero is good against Asmo as well. So a lot. And Veil of Summer can actually counter Asmo um, food sacrifices as well. Yep. So yeah, there's a lot of playable stuff here for Namdang. Probably more than he can afford to bring in. So like, if it's just for the Asmo attacks, maybe Veil of Summer is not even worth it at that point. Yeah, if you're worried about some kind of counter magic like Metallic Rebuke or something along those lines, you saw Black Source, so maybe you're thinking about discard spells. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could talk yourself into Veils, but yeah, without knowing the composition, probably best to leave those, especially because he has so many other really, really powerful cards. Right. Okay, so let's see how things play out in game number two. Players drawing up their opening hands here. Thanks for being with us. We're in round five out of eight, so... We're going to be here for the entire rest of the day. We've got the, uh, the elimination rounds coming tonight. Becky Bell will be back. She did a good job yesterday, so we decided to let her come back. Uh, Devin, awesome. Have you, you're, you're here for one more round after this one, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a great time. This is this yeah. has been a lot of fun. We've, we've been seeing a lot of cool decks today. You know, we saw... Uh, I'm sure you're probably your favorite deck of the entire tournament, the core tapper deck, probably my favorite <laughs> deck of the entire tournament, the Asmo deck. So mm -hmm. really, really uh, cool display. You know, we've seen the, the usual four color nonsense, but uh, there, there's been some some cool stuff mixed in. So it's been a, it's been a fun day so far. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So Rag event flips over a land again, uh, just like last game. Here is a ledger shredder. So one one So Traverse Ooh. with Delirium can actually fetch up uh, both sages now in multiple numbers, even though one has been pitched. That's something that's a little different from last game. This is a heavy start here. There's a lot Gabriel. going on here. Yeah. <laughs> so we saw a turn one Ragavan, Ragavan connected, and then we had three mana with an Urza Saga as our second land, which is probably the best second land you could have, and then a follow up Shredder and an Epicure. So we got a trigger off the Shredder, a permanent off of the Epicure, and a Saga, and a Ragavan. There's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Bang well, only on two lands so far. This Maybe is probably you... motioning a Renin Six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is good. Good for Nam. <clears throat> so what we need to see here for Gabriel is another land, and it is there. So constructs can make their way in and ooh, slam the brakes on killing Renin 6. Solitude incoming. Yep, so we saw the Shredder go after Ren, the Epicure went after Nam. Solitude's mm -hmm. gonna take care of the Ledger Shredder to protect the Renin 6. Yeah, this definitely uh <clears throat> Screws up whatever Gabriel was playing for the turn here, as the Ren Six wasn't supposed to still be in play. Yeah, and you saw him pause a little bit there. Mm -hmm. um, just doesn't want to give his hand away. He knows that he doesn't have a counter spell in his hand, but he doesn't want to tell that to Nam. And what he was thinking is, if, uh, he was thinking if I want to cast this Shrapnel Blast this turn. So it's good to kind of think about that while the Solitude is on the stack, because that's definitely a place where Gabriel would cast a counter spell if he had it. So just to kind of doesn't want to give as, as much information away to Nam. Mm -hmm. All right. Ren 6 picks off Vodale and Epicure. And anything else before this construct comes in? Presumably an end step here. Probably a land drop, I would imagine. There, there is a small thing here. I kind of want, I kind of would have liked to see Gabriel 
fetch on his own turn because if mm -hmm. he goes fetch and end of turn, Nam can respond and besage with the saga. Right. Uh, didn't didn't get punished by it, but I'm, I might you know you're gonna get a mountain anyways. I might like to see a fetch main phase. Sure. A similar reasoning as that uh, is exactly what led to me losing my first Star City Finals. Is not anticipating something like that happening. All right, so we have second construct coming in, and as long as this first one can connect here, Gabriel still got a decent start. I wonder what we're going for. Are we going for a needle or a cookbook? Maybe a lantern Ooh. too. If we got a See, need, sorry. I was gonna say needle is kind of accomplishes the same thing as lantern. Mm, I don't know. It's probably better to get needle though. I think. Okay, if, so if I was he I was thinking if you needle the Ren 6, you actually get to attack Nam instead. So that's kind of worth three damage or four, uh, four damage, I guess, uh, or five. But attack's coming across anyway. So, yeah. This I, is looking... All right. I think Gabriel's plan is to sacrifice the Soul Guide Lantern to exile Nam's graveyard when the Ren 6 goes up. Mm -hmm. I think that might be the plan, but that's only a temporary solution because Nam does have another fetch lane in play, right? Mm -hmm. So you could just see like Nam go uptick the Ren, you break the Lantern, then Nam can just next turn break the fetch lane. But maybe you're just okay with that. Maybe. I mean, maybe the Soul Guide Lantern just stays in play to count as uh, for the constructs. That too. Yeah. Uh, Nam is at nine. If he wants to pick up and use a fetch land and Gabriel's able to answer whatever it plays, this is a lethal attack. Yeah, it's possible he also wants the Lantern to prevent a potential Unholy Heat, so it's more of an insurance policy mm -hmm. than something that, that a proactive tool. Right. Okay, so we saw Nam pick up the Missy Rainforest, and then Gabriel asked him to wait, because he may want to respond here. Oh, says that's okay. I'll keep my guys as four fours for now. So yeah, the entire graveyard is just the one wooded foothills, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah I believe so. Oh, well, that is certainly not what Gabriel wanted to see. Yeah, that's rough. Supreme Verdict going to take out all of Gabriel's pressure. Uh, you know, Constellation Prize does have an expressive iteration to potentially find another find another threat. It does have a ragavan too. So likely going to go, what, Dash Ragavan? Okay, we're going upstairs. Interesting. Hmm. hmm. Do you play that or do you play the expressive iteration? I assume you play the expressive iteration. Okay. Because the Codal, the Codal just gets swallowed up by the Ren anyways. Sure. I might have played the Quaddle, but you're right. That is true. It will get killed by the Ren 6. You know, we don't know, or Gabriel doesn't know if Nam is, you know, Cheyenne lands or not. Now, I don't know if you got a, a good glimpse of Gabriel's hand. I have not. But there are two copies of a certain card with uh, Nam at seven life. Okay. There are two copies of Shrapnel Blast in Gabriel's hand. That's, so. <laughs> yeah, well, that's certainly interesting. There are yes, several artifacts yeah. in play. So if Nang, Nam taps out without an Omnath here, then uh, yeah, that might be it. What happened? Oh, yeah. Nam couldn't cast the verdict. We did not. Yep, we missed that. I uh, see. I, wow. I just always kind of assume that four color can always cast all of their spells, right. especially. So with four I don't even. Play. I don't even like ever really realize that kind of stuff. But yeah, that is mm -hmm. correct. Okay. Well, that is. Uh, let's see. I know we tried and failed to back up earlier because too many things had happened, even though the judges decided they wanted to. This seems cleaner. Uh... Because it was a Misty, right? And I think Nam got a forest with the Misty, so you could just mm -hmm. get an island instead. Well, not, they, that would right. That wouldn't be the backup, though, because the fetch was not an illegal play. Sure, that's fair. So you would back up to the casting of the verge because that's what's not allowed to happen. So this would be... Backing up here would be to put the verdict in the hand, but the fetch has already happened. Uh, however, since we've cast an iteration, that's 
uh, that might be relevant enough that they don't aren't willing to back that up. Oh boy. But if there's double shrapnel blast, it may not change necessarily. Gabriel may be able to win anyway, but yeah, I wonder about that. Yeah, this one's going to be tough. This is probably very similar to the last situation where too much is probably mm-hmm. too much has happened. Yeah. But given that they wanted to back up the last one and then couldn't, this one is, uh, I mean, so the iteration, we, we can look at all the cards because it's the bottom card of the deck. Well, I guess there's a hidden information of card in the hand and Nam doesn't know what that card is. So there is some unknown yeah, cause info. It, it's, it's hard to say exactly what that one card was from the iteration. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, apologies for that. I we we definitely we definitely both missed that. I just like I said, I I'm just kind of at this point. I just assume that they can always cast all their spells. Yeah. All right. So just especially with two abundant to... growths, you know. Yeah. No, right. That's that's kind of the easy assumption. Like uh, two abundant growths. Okay, you can kind of be able to cast anything. Well, not quite. Yeah. Especially after you fetched. But yeah, obviously Nam, not thinking that through either, and just blindly getting a forest and assuming. And yeah. So another for the second time today, we're going to have a judge consider backing up a game, which, well, what do you want to talk about this time? Because last time we talked about scenarios like this and where we used those. <laughs> so uh, I don't really, I don't know if I have any more of those scenarios in the back of no, my head. No, <laughs> Nothing fired I've got up. all kinds of random crazy judge calls over the last, you know, <laughs> years of playing magic. But I don't think we've used some of those before, too. Yeah. So, all right. So we're playing, uh, we're playing modern today, this event. Uh, you're, we've, we've kind of accepted the fact that four color is probably the best deck. Would that be your choice? Uh, you say you love this Asmo deck. Are you playing Asmo if you have an event? If you have not playing modern? four color. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looking at my schedule, I think I have one left that might be modern. Okay. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm just, I would play Team of Rhinos. It's still the deck that I've played the most in this format, the deck I have the most experience with. And uh, I, I think it's still decently well positioned. I think mm-hmm. it, you know, there's a couple of bad matchups, but no, I, I, I refuse to play the four color deck. Sure. <laughs> just, it's just not me. Right. And yeah, I think, uh, I think I remain a Tron child for now. Uh, my faith in the deck was reinvigorated after that top four run in an RCQ here locally. Uh, I had been willing to set it aside, but I hadn't been playing a lot of modern. I'd been playing mostly Pioneer lately. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll play this modern event. We'll play Tron. And actually, it went pretty well. So, yeah, I think they reeled me back in. <laughs> once, once a Tron player, always a Tron player. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I even play. I mean, my, my deck in Pioneer Lotus Field is actually not that dissimilar from Tron. You're trying to get ahead by cheating yeah. a couple land in, uh, a couple land that boosts you on mana, and then just cast expensive spells. Uh, in that regard, it's very similar. I even just yeah, I I actually was going through my card box, and I was like, why? How were my Sylvan Scryings? And I was like, oh, they're in the Tron deck, <laughs> of course. So just switch them over. Yeah, <laughs> get the Besages in there, all that stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's have to, practically the same deck. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, as we uh, sort things through, hopefully you all in chat are enjoying your day here with us, despite the fact that we've had a couple uh, ruling snafus, but that's not unusual. Um, the fact that yeah. we caught two lengthy ones on camera isn't ideal, but, you know, things like this happen. Mm-hmm. You know, every people, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, it's just part of part of magic tournament. That's why judges exist. If people yeah. didn't make mistakes, what would judges wouldn't have anything to do? You know what I mean? Right. So there's there's definitely uh, it, it's it, it's just a very, very common occurrence. And, you know, it's unfortunate when it happens, but that's the judges will definitely do their best to put the game state back into uh, if they can, if they think it's reasonable. If if not, then, you know, play continues, but they'll make the ruling. Yeah. And it's something where I, I saw there was uh there were some judges that were disappointed by the the uh, the money being offered by the DreamHack event for for judges, and, and it occurred to me now I don't know what all goes into that, but judging in Magic, judging in Magic is probably significantly more demanding than judging a video game, which is what DreamHack mostly consists of, because there you're probably dealing with I, I would think mostly inter- interactions between players. Um, keeping the peace or out now I may be short sighted here. I, I don't actually don't know, or, you know, tournament, like things like brackets, who plays, you know, that kind of thing, or keeping track of things, not actually dealing with the game because the video game itself t- keeps track of that. Whereas in magic, obviously right. uh, that's different uh, coming from the uh, pre-digital age, more or less 
as we currently stand. All right. Okay, the ruling is both players are going to receive a warning for a game rule violation, and the game is going to stay uh, exactly where it is now, as they've ruled that we cannot back up. So, okay, let's go back to the table and continue things on. If they're ready for yeah. us, looks like there's still some conversation going on. But understandably so, you know, there was a lot that did happen with the expressive iteration uh, card, not a card being in Gabriel's hand that was unknown to Nam from the expressive iteration. So understandable that that mm -hmm. it was unable to, you know, to rewind it. All right. So players in chat asking why do both players get a warning. So the reason is one player gets a warning, obviously, because a spell is passed cast illegally. Both players are required to maintain the game state, which, in, which includes keeping things accurate. Like, for example, uh, if a 3-3 three, three takes three damage in combat and doesn't die, as both players are responsible for keeping up on things like that. Same here. Uh, mana was spent to cast a spell that didn't exist. That's the responsibility of both players. So both players get a game rules violation warning. It's not. This is not a warning where the uh, many warnings can be upgraded. For example, if you do something... I don't know. There, there are there are many things that can lead to an upgrade. For I don't know, like if you attack with a goblin guide and forget to tell your opponent that, and they don't know, and you just don't say anything, and you do this multiple times throughout the tournament, and that's realized. Those can be upgraded to game losses. Failure to maintain game state cannot be upgraded, so right. you can never be punished for not holding your opponent to playing properly. Um, yep. So in this particular case, if Gabriel had multiple opponents today cast spells that they couldn't illegally cast. He would not be punished for that. If Nam Dang cast multiple spells without having the correct mana, those would eventually upgrade. Uh, so that's the difference. So that's why both players get a warning. It's more of a tracking feature than it is uh, an actual penalty to the player. And that's, that's I'll take a minute here because we have, the ruling is being appealed. So we have a minute here. Um, yep. That is something that I feel like a lot of less experienced players almost panic a little bit when the judge is involved and they get a warning and it's really something to just you know if you haven't been through it before just take a breath it's not a big deal it's something that's used to just keep track of things go out today it's not no one's accusing you of cheating and i think that's an easy assumption right. to make is that if if a judge is called in the warning some player had to be cheating that's not true at all the judges are there to help you right <laughs> And I think right. there there's a lot of people who like pe people who call judges not necessarily for anything one specifically just you know um, it, it just want to make sure that the game is being played properly and, right. and this you know that people shouldn't take offense to that there's no there is no offense when a judge call, a judge is called it's just mostly to the judge like I said the judge is there to just make sure that the game is being played properly mm -hmm. so yeah and and I think that's for so someone like me uh, if if my let's say my opponent has a Thalia. And they cast an ether vial and they only pay one for it. I'm not suspicious that my opponent is cheating. However, I will call a judge every single time that happens because I have no way of knowing if the player is doing that constantly throughout the day or not. And the only way the judges can keep track is if you let them know by giving the player a warning. So that's just kind of something that a lot of people would just say, oh, that's fine. Just tap a second mana. And that's okay. But um, it's, it's, fi it's fine to call a judge even when you're not sus suspicious of of cheating or something like that. Anyway, I don't know if we're back to gameplay. Not it actually looks like we still aren't. Okay. Uh, should the war. Okay. So we'll, we'll take questions from chat here. Should the warning yeah, be more severe chat. for the person who misplayed? Yes. And it is. So that's why I was saying how the, the player who misplayed gets the warning that can be upgraded <laughs> later on. The player who's on the other side who didn't do anything wrong their penalty is just a tracking. It's not. Uh, it's not something that can be can get worse later. Correct. Disqualify in hundred year ban. Well, that seems in, uh, a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> That's probably a little aggressive. All right. So now we're back to gameplay. So let's see what happened. It looks like uh, the original ruling, ruling was, probably, was upheld. Yeah. So the ruling was upheld. The Supreme Court did resolve, uh, and we are where we are at, which means. That Gabriel Ebedi still has two shrapnel blasts in hand, if Devin read that correctly. And so. Nam might still be in some trouble here. I could have sworn that there was. Yeah, there's two shrapnel blasts. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> all of this for it might not even matter, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. Yeah, well. Because I, yeah. I think Nam's just dead. Mm -hmm. 
I like how we just sat here for 20 minutes, like all this judge call. It's just Dang. like, all right, you're dead. <laughs> Damn Dang's like, judge, he can't put two spells on the sack uh, at the same time. I have to ferry and play. Oh, that was too good. But okay, so after all of that, the game resumes, and 12 seconds later, Gabriel Abadie wins anyway. So we're on the game three. That was a good one. I like that. That's all right. that's awesome. So, and then and Gabriel Abadie's like, yeah, we had to wait through that whole ruling, and I knew what was going to happen anyway as soon as the result. But yeah, still have to go. imagine being Gabriel in that position. Like you know, you yeah. have the two trap to blast. You know, you have the game locked up, and you're just yeah. sitting there for 20 minutes with like this judge elaborate judge call, and it's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's too all good. Right. So for people that are just showing up, there are some questions in the chat. Oh, what was it that happened? The player cast Supreme Verge without having the mana to actually cast it. Uh, so that was, um, and then, but both play, the other player didn't realize it, and the game went on for a turn cycle, and then it was caught, and the judges ruled that it was too far to back up. Yeah, the that mana base, the mana base was forest, mountain, and then two lands that had abundant growth. Now, normally, when you look at your mana base and you see two lands that have abundant growth, you just kind of assume that you know it. it you just kind of assume you can cast anything, and that's what me and Joe both assumed as well. It's, it's really hard to keep track of, of specific, you know, mana like those basic lands and all that stuff. So yeah, certainly something that uh, that I have been um, guilty of a few times doing coverage is not realizing, like in the early like turn one, turn two. Okay, yeah, sure. There's not much on the board, but like once you get to like turn eight, turn ten, it's easy to keep track of to lose track of like what mana is available and the player, you know can cast something and, and something that's easy to miss. So a lot of times chat is pointing out things that happen in games that are illegal that aren't actually illegal, but sometimes they're on top of it. This time was one of those cases. So thanks chat for being here and getting that right. And if you, you know, if you were involved, if you caught that yourself, follow the channel so that you'll get notifications and be here next time to help us out. And if you didn't catch it, well, maybe you learned something from the rules discussion. So you should follow. So you're here next time to learn more. Also, follow the stream if you're a big fan of Trap the Blast. Uh, that yeah. me and me and that card go way back. So, all right, rolling up over here. Yeah, Trap the Blast, real two two mana, five damage. That's quite a bit. Uh, Eagle so and many, Pioneer. A lot of people seem to forget that too. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of cards have uh, kind of you know been trumped by the you know recent stuff, but that uh, that's a card from way back that still that still thumps you pretty hard. All right, I think we got two keeps. All right. We got, I think, a turn one Voldaren Epicure. Now, I, I looked at Gabriel's hand. Looks like he had a Steam Vents and Urza Saga, a couple iterations of Voldaren Epicure. And I was a little bit worried for a second that he wasn't going to be able to cast spells because, uh, as we saw in game one, Saga doesn't cast iteration. So a little awkward, but did find an island to uh, help cast those iterations down the road. And Saga's probably his best. Oh, this is a good. This is a good. Good sequence for Gabriel for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So committing himself to making constructs the next couple of turns probably instead of casting iterations, but nothing wrong with that. Mounting a solid board presence. Uh, there was a question in chat about the deck list. The deck lists are available. We did go over them previously, but since we went through it after game one, we didn't bother bringing them back up for you this round. But all the deck lists from yesterday's team event are available now. Deck lists from today's event will be unlocked once we reach the top eight of the top four this evening yeah and this is um this is definitely the kind of where you see cracking the fetch lane with the abundant growth always kind of interesting but that it's so it's so good when uh when you're playing with the traverse stuff because getting to put that enchantment on a fetch lane and then give you an extra type basically for free because mm -hmm. the chamber plays itself anyways uh helping turn on traverse and holy heat and that kind of stuff but yeah, this is kind of exactly what Gabriel wants. Wants to, I don't know what he's doing there, but <laughs> wants to be able to, um, to you know, get the saga into play, have a, apply pressure without having to commit to counter spells, things of that nature, and then two iterations if uh, if he's able, if Nam's able to deal with the saga. So, mm -hmm. all right, there's unholy heat on Shredder, which does allow connive. I believe Gabriel has quite a bit of burn in his hand. Yeah, what two galvanic blasts? Is that three galvanic blasts? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. <laughs> Trips. Well, now it's good. Now it's dubs because he discarded one. It drew a I third iteration. Three, yeah. <laughs> we got a full house going on here. Well, you see, you don't need three. Yeah, full house is maximum <laughs> five cards. That's why he pitched one of the galvanic blasts. True. <laughs> 
Although to be fair, I think if he knew he was going to draw another iteration, he would probably rather have three Galvanic Blasts two iteration. I agree. Yeah. All right, iteration for Nam Dang, but uh, given even just eight points of burn in Gabriel's hand, yeah, constructs aren't going to take too many hits to put Dam in serious danger here. We'll see if one is able to come across here and connect. Okay. Feed you, I assume, going after Saga. Yeah. Weirdly enough, kind of fixing Gabriel's mana, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I've probably probably would have enjoyed being able to get that last token out of it, but this is okay too. It does just he would have committed another turn to making a token. Now he's gonna play iteration instead, presumably, and which is you know also just fine. Yeah, iteration, try to find maybe another artifact to pump up the constructs this turn. Mm -hmm. Uh finds That's a saga. saga. That works. Might have been a shredder too. That'd be a good turn. Saga plus Shredder. And cookbook. Okay. Found a Daredevil, which Ooh. allows us to make a lot of... That makes a lot of food, which makes the Construct even bigger. So that's an attack for four, I believe. Yeah. And that's uh, with two Galvanics left in hand. Uh, one more swing like that will actually put Dam in serious danger. Yep, yeah, and then the, the cookbook giving us basically infinite access to artifacts. We're never going to lose Metalcraft. So Nam, yeah, Nam's going to have to have an answer for this Construct mm -hmm. token. Something like a Teferi is probably Nam's best play here. Teferi bounce the Construct token, um, get, a, get a little bit going that way. And Nam Looks also, for... Nam is aware. I mean, he saw that Galvanic Blast get discarded. So <laughs> it may be on his radar that Gabriel has quite a bit of burn in hand already. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a thing where maybe maybe you assume that Gabriel discarded the Galvanic Blast before he had access to the cookbook. Mm -hmm. Maybe he thought that he wasn't going to be able to turn on turn on Metalcraft. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's that's a little scary discarding that uh, discarding that Galvanic Blast. All right, there's Teferi, Time Reveler. This will get rid of the token and well, okay, Galvanic in response. Stairs. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, and I think Gabriel wanted to do that because if he draws another red card, he only has access to two red sources. So if you use the burn spell now, um, did he? No, that's not a red card. But now we can iteration. So you can iteration here, try to find another burn spell. If you miss, then you just make a token. Mm -hmm. that so good. that's probably what Gabriel's going to do here. Now, obviously, there could be a counter spell. Mm hmm. Was Nam playing Counterspell? I believe he was. Let me take a look. Interesting. Shredder or Ragavan are yeah. the options here. Yeah, Nam is playing four Counterspells. And the choice... Maybe, maybe was, he wants to take the Ragavan. I believe the Shredder was taken. Not... I guess if you take the Ragavan, there's just... Then you kind of you kind of get... Um, could be bad against... What's it called? Uh, Ice Fang Kotal. Because you just go dash yeah. ragged and codal, that kind of stuff. So maybe it's a little bit better to take the the shredder there. That's true. I guess uh, ragged and haste is nice. I mean, you know you're you know you're making the token at the end of the turn here. See, this is kind of the nightmare scenario because yeah. you can't kill the Omnath with, with the trigger on the stack. All right, that's four life gained with potential three more on Gabriel's turn. And now this Galvanic may have to actually go towards the Omnath. It probably does at this point, yeah. But now we can make tokens. So we can go make a token. It's a it's a big token because mm -hmm. we have one, two, I think it's a five, five, potentially a six, six, after a cookbook activation, seven, after a saga, eight. So this could this could, this might just be a lethal token this turn. Mm -hmm. Needs to remember to untap the cookbook there. Yeah, I don't know why the cookbook's tapped. It's on its own row. I think you just missed it. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to make a token. That is not there yet. Did make a token, right? Any motion? Yeah, you tap two mana. Mm -hmm. Believe in me, a token. Well, I, unless we're... I mean, that cookbook's in play, right? That's not an exile zone, I don't think. I believe it's in play, yeah. Yeah, well, maybe, um, Director, if you want to radio over to Corianne, 
because okay, it's already been done because you're not actually allowed to forget to untap something. No. That's that's a rule. I remember learning how to play magic. It always so yep, there we go. Someone would always like not uncommonly forget, you know, phase out of turn is like, oh, you forgot to untap. Dang, I guess my turn's over with. Yeah, no, we're uh, <laughs> we don't allow that in I guess I just said play. no. <laughs> oh, whoops, forgot my turn again. All right. Upstairs. So not clearing out the Omnath first, and there's a solitude. Yep, solitude pitch to kill the token, which makes sense. Nam would rather do that than chump block. Uh, yep, might as well gain the extra life. So Gabriel's going to gain a bunch of life. Token's going to die. Now you have the question of, do you go after the Omnath? You, you kind of have to, right? You, I think and honestly, so. I mean, Gabriel's kind of up on cards. Like he has, mm -hmm. if if this Galvanic Blast and Omnath resolves, he has the he has the threat in play. Teferi can't downtick. Now it looks like it's going to get counterspelled, but... Yeah, you just kind of have to go for it here, I think. Oh, nope, just gain four life. Okay, that's fine. I think Gabriel's okay with that. I would probably play the Epicure, and you could dash the Ragavan to play around Red and Six next turn, potentially. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this looks okay, because you, you you basically forced Nam to two-for-one himself with the Solitude to not, to not have to chump block the Construct token. You were able to answer the Omnath. So yeah, this is this is looking okay for Gabriel. Okay, replacement to fairy. And then I'll answer the construct. Boy, Urza Saga is so strong, but these decks have a lot of answers to the constructs as well. Yeah, run down to kill the Ragaban. Hold that one, yeah. Yeah. See, that's kind of why I would have rather seen the rather seen the Epicure last turn and we could dash the Ragaban this turn. Mm-hmm. Iteration finds Asmo, Boulder, and Epicure, and a land. So Asmo goes to hand. That's not bad. Still is the cookbook to be able to make more food. So we can go play Asmo. Play the Epicure. Play the other cookbook. Okay. I mean, plenty going on here for Gabriel. Yeah. But not making rapid inroads on Namdang's life total. And with the constructs all gone now, it's going to be a little more difficult. But at least the Asmo's in place. So Omnath tricks are, are kind of offline. Yeah. Gabriel's making a lot of game objects, just not a lot of power, you mm -hmm. know? So you typically see there are some versions of these decks that play Time Sieve. They're usually Grixis mm -hmm. or sometimes Esper. Um, and they're playing with Time Sieve, which you can kind of go off with Cookbook, making a, a with a whole bunch of extra food left over. Um, but Gabriel isn't really focusing more on that combo aspect. He's more of a kind of mid-range tempo-ish kind of deck with playing the cheap creatures like Asmo and that kind of stuff, and then backing that up with burn spells. Uh, so you don't you're you not seeing any of the combo elements from Gabriel's deck. Mm-hmm. Run in six picks up a land. Soul Gray Lantern says that's okay. I believe Gabriel's tapped out anyway. Oh, I guess it's free to wipe the Grey Bridge, isn't it? It, it is. It only yeah. costs mana to draw a card. Yeah. All right. Namdang picks up Yorion. Uh, it is not a very impressive Yorion, but it is castable. And if Namdang doesn't have another blocker, then I guess it's, he could play it, but no, it's just going to pass. Yeah, representing... I, I don't know if I caught a glimpse of Nam's hand, but it could be a Solitude, could be Ice Fang Kotal. Mm -hmm. Not exactly sure. It could be Supreme Verdict as well. Yeah, because the Fairy did uptick that turn. Yeah, as long as he taps his mana correctly this time. There are two white sources and a blue in play, so it is possible. Uh, Urza Saga is a nice one. Yeah, Saga is definitely good. Saga is a way for Gabriel to put a lot more pressure on. Again, each of these constructs at this point of the game is going to be lethal by itself with mm -hmm. all of the extra food and cookbooks going on. So 
definitely what Gabriel was looking for. I think that is that the that might be the fourth saga. It's at least the third, I think. Funnily enough, does have the blood crypt as well. It could hard cast the uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> could hard cast the daredevil. Yeah, sometimes All it right. happened, you know. Just blooded the daredevil that time. Found Ragavan. That's gonna be dashed now. And well, Nemdang's gonna need something. Obviously, Supreme Bird could be ideal, but a hard cast solitude would be significant. Yeah, not likely to be able to. A... Yeah. Not likely to be able to block because of the Asmo, but. Yeah, funnily enough, Solitude plus Asmo kind of doesn't work the way you want it to because Asmo is, Asmo is having the creature deal damage to itself and the Solitude has lifelink, which means if you Asmo a Solitude, your opponent gains six life. Mm -hmm. Right. So not exactly what Gabriel would want. I mean, obviously he, he would kill the Solitude, but. Okay. Uh, Ragman eats an unholy heat. Five damage comes across. Uh, Nam Dang now in Shrapnel Blast range with just one. Uh, Gabriel had two of the previous game. Not ready to fire here, though, but does have another blood token, so can do some more digging for future turns. Play another cookbook. cookbook. Yeah, get the Daredevil back, make some more resources. But yeah, not really like as we talked about with with the with no presence of time sieve and things like that. No way to can kind of convert these extra food into meaningful resources if Nam doesn't have creatures to play into the Asmo. All so right, Basiju probably going after Saga, I assume. Yep, you are correct on that. Land fetched up, which. If nothing else, does allow Slowguide Lantern to be able to draw a card and say it's going to blow the graveyard away. No interest in Emrakul coming down. Understandably so. Yeah, I think he. I think Gabriel is trying to break up the Besiege Ren loop. Mm -hmm. Maybe he wanted to protect the the cookbooks or something like that. I don't know though. Maybe worse to just dig a dig a card deeper. You know. Just get closer to the to the shrapnel blast or the galvanic mm -hmm. blast that's lethal. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, Nam Dang with just two cards in hand. Uh, Asmo's still on the board. Yeah. Technically a two turn clock. Mm -hmm. and and maybe Gabriel's we'll got a blood. Yeah. Goes oval chase again. Uh, yeah. Hard casting oval chase is, is becoming reasonable here. Um, it's practically a lethal threat, and there isn't a whole lot else going on after all this other stuff has happened. So we're going to see an attack here. It's not lethal. You can kill a Planeswalker. It is going to kill a Planeswalker. It's a fairy down. Okay. Yeah. Now that think? the... Yeah, there you... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going. <laughs> Might as well make some food first. Yeah, we found sure. a... I didn't know he had a second one. Okay. Yeah, make some food first, and yep, it's 4-2 time. This is uh, <laughs> whenever I play Asmo, everybody in my chat loves when I start casting four twos. So yeah, of course, <laughs> it's great. It's, uh, it's almost lethal, and to combine, there is lethal damage available. Ren Six doesn't in have any outlet here to impact the board, and is Nam Dang going to succumb to the beatdown here? The claw. <laughs> in fairness, uh, this is this is like Plan Q. You know, this is <laughs> we're we're exhausting a lot of plans at this point. <laughs> All right. Can't tell quite how many food are on the table, but it's a lot. Enough. There's mul multiple dice worth of food. Okay. We have reached time in the round. So at some point, we're going to find a time to run the interview that Mappet Monte filmed yesterday with a few of the players, but it's not going to be this round either. As we keep finding our way to time, we didn't even get to the backup match this time. <laughs> All right. Cantrip dress down. Looking for help. Uh, Microman makes a good point in the chat. These players would definitely have a time extension. So let me cl uh, clarify True. what the director was. Okay, time in their oh, match has been called, okay. is, is what was being told to us. 
has it been that long? Uh, I mean, it feels like it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. right, so we are going to turn one here. There you can see it at the top of the screen. Here's an attack, Quaddle. All right, that's pretty ineffectual. I guess it draws a card. Oh, and that's it. That'll do Gabriel it. Yep, it's the Asmo. Yeah. Wow. Takes it down with Oval Chase Daredevil. I mean, Asmo helped out, I suppose, but really, when they're writing the history of this match, Oval Chase Daredevil <laughs> took it, won the game, right? It did the most damage at the end there. Oh. Oval Chase Daredevil with the MVP. I'm not trying to say that I was biased, but Asmo taking down the round. Love to see it. All right. So that's going to conclude five rounds of Swiss with Gabriel Ibedi taking down Nam Dang. We'll be back for round six in a few minutes. Not too long as we're way over time on the round. So stay right here. We'll be right back. <laughs> 